Welcome to the Angel Empowerment Show, from I Can't to I Can, with your hosts, Cindy Smith and co-hosts, Deb, Nola, and Sam. In this show, airing every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, gain more insight and practical, intuitive tools to bring more clarity and purpose into your daily life. You can listen or be involved in live professional angel card readings on TransformationTalkRadio.com so you can heal, thrive, and grow in your life. And you'll experience it all with four of the best in the field. The Angel Empowerment Show starts now. Welcome, everyone, to the Angel Empowerment Show on Transformation Talk Radio. Mm -hmm. Tonight, uh, Deb Weinberger and I are here, and we are going to be talking about planting seeds of success in your for yourself and for your kids. And I just want to remind our listeners that in the second half of the show, we are going to be doing some live angel card readings. And if you would like to have a reading, you can call in at 1-800-930-2819 or put your name and location in the um, comment section on any of the social media platforms. And our amazing producer will connect us with you and, and we can do that for you in the in the second half. So welcome, Deb. Thanks for stepping in for Cindy tonight. My pleasure. My pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tonight, I just, I mean, as as hard as it is, as it is right now, I mean, we've got a whole bunch of snow here <laughs> in Calgary. Hard to think about spring, but I know it's it's getting closer. And I always think of spring as a time of new beginnings and, you know, starting fresh. And I think it's a great, you know, I, I have more energy when we've got, you know, more daylight and the weather gets warmer. And I just thought it was a perfect time to sort of, you know, think about some things that we could do for ourselves and for our kids to, um, you know, set them up for success. So Deb, do you have, uh, you know, any thoughts on that or things that you want to share about um, what you well, think when spring comes? Yeah, well, one thing I, I wanted to, if, what, what it reminds me of when spring comes around, when you were saying like that we have more energy and um, <clears throat> I did a little bit of training in the five elements, you know, the Chinese medicine, the five elements. And, and in that I learned about our body rhythms and the seasons. Now, like I say, it's a very, I did a very little bit, um, but what really appealed to me is understanding that in the winter, which is interesting because a lot of people, they they often gear up in winter because that's when there's kids are in sports, the kids are in school, we plan these trips and, but our bodies actually are really wanting to slow down and calm down and kind of go within. And then in the spring, like you said, we develop more energy because the days are getting longer and it is our natural body rhythm. So you think of the <clears throat> the plants kind of shooting up and they've got a, that they, it takes more energy for them to shoot up through the earth than it does once they're up to blossom and grow. So we think of our bodies that way in the spring and it's honoring that. And, but I know what the, what the topic we're talking about is more like, what are we planting? But I just wanted to cover a little bit about honoring our body system now's the time it's spring it's a new beginning let's lay this foundation and but we can lay the foundation throughout the year too but spring is just a really good time to think about it so there's my little input there yeah, perfect Why? perfect yeah. right mm-hmm. well and that's what I think and as I said I have you know more energy and and like you said not I know you know I've done a little bit around elements too but just I know listening to our bodies, I think is so important. And, you know, the, the winter, right. When we, um, you know, hibernating in some ways, but I think that's a beautiful time to, um, you know, be letting things percolate, I guess. Right. And, and, and then as spring comes, I just see it as, you know, these new ideas starting to, to come through and blossom. So, you know, and, and you and I, when we are teaching our kids programs, um, you know, I love that we we help our kids set up a daily ritual. And I think that's, you know, that's really what I wanted to focus on tonight was was doing that. And 
you know, I, I last week I I did a reading for uh, a woman and, you know, she had lots on her plate, right? Kind of, you know, that um, sandwich plate, you know, she got kids and, and uh, older parents, you know, helping with that and just overwhelmed, right? So much to do. And I think, you know, that's something that when I'm, you know, working with clients, I'm very careful because I don't want to add more to the to-do list because most of us, right, we we have more than enough. But it's looking at, okay, where are the things, you know, areas that we want to maybe make some changes and how do we do that um, the easiest way, right? So I think starting with a daily ritual, you know, like we, like we teach our kids. And so, you know, I think one of the first things, and we've talked about this in, in other uh, shows, but just that, that grounding and shielding for kids to start with that, right. Every, every morning and every evening. Um, And then, you know, asking them like checking in what, what else would they like to do? And I know for me, like I, um, mine, mine changes. It's, it doesn't stay the same. And I think that's, That's an important point that I want to make because sometimes, um, you know, we start to create a plan or a new habit and then we, we slip back. Right. And it's easy to stop and beat ourselves up and go, Oh, you know, I'm such a failure. I can't stick to anything, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's okay. Right. As it's just, okay, let's get back on. And maybe, you know, like one of the things that, that I love doing is journaling, um, but I'll, I have spurts, right? I'll do it for a while and then I'll switch and, and do something else. So knowing that that's okay to switch. I think the important thing is though, is taking time every single day where you're doing something to nurture yourself. How about I, you? What, I totally do you have a, uh, well, first when I, when it comes to the kids, I love that we are, we're introducing a daily ritual. Now, yes, we have suggestions because we're teaching them techniques that are wonderful and, but they get to design it themselves. But the most important foundation, so the most important seed that we are planting, helping them plant, I guess is a better term, is that they need a daily ritual. And they, they can choose to do this daily ritual to set them off on a good tone for the day. And like you say, we teach them to ground, to shield, to clear, and they get to choose which ones they want to do. But it's the idea that a daily ritual is great and that will care that will become a habit that will carry them through to adulthood. Mm-hmm. So that is planting great seeds for them. And knowing that this is just for them, this is self-nurturing. Um, for myself, yes, I do. I um I do, I, when I get up in the morning, one of the things I do is I, you know, I, and I've talked about this before, you know, at a lot of people will do a gratitude journal in the beginning of their day. And I've tried that and it just, um, I struggled with it. So because I struggled with it, I thought this isn't the right thing for me. So what, but what I do do, because I think gratitude is so important. So when we, put ourselves in a state of gratitude we walk out of a state of envy is my belief Mm -hmm. so I do wake up in the morning and with the intention of finding things throughout my day that I'll be grateful for so being in a state of gratitude and then for me I find at the end of the day and I may not journal it sometimes I do I will um, reflect on the things and it's I really look for little things because the big things are obvious. I look for the little things that I could be grateful for. That stranger that smiled at me, you know, just little things like that. So, um, and then the other thing I do like to do in the mornings is, uh, well, Noel and I, we we do this together. We pull a card, even though the card is for ourselves, we send it to each other and we, and like I will tell Nola what I feel that my message from my angels in is for that day. The reason we send it to each other is that then we're accountable, right? It's like, and I love it because often Nola will come back and say, yes, great. And I also ha- am getting this message for you. So we're, I'm, we're getting our angel messages. So I'm touching, I'm connecting to the angels every single morning to set the tone for my day. So that's another one of my 
my daily practices I do most days. Mm -hmm. I do love to journal, but because I'm often running late off to work, it doesn't always get done. But that's another thing I do love to do. What about you, Nola? I know you love to journal. Yeah. And, and again, that doesn't happen all the time. Um, But, and, and again, it's not right. I like, I love that you said, um, talked about the gratitude and, you know, that writing in the the journal, it wasn't working for you. And I think that's so important for, for, you know, people to know, and also for, you know, to remind your kids, like it, it, you know, find what works for you. So um, as you you were talking about, Deb, I mean, I love that we pull a, you know, an angel card and get that message. And, uh, you know, most mornings, they're not, not too many that we miss. Yeah. Um, I also, and this has probably been going on two years now, I mess, I write three things that I'm grateful for every day. I text it to a friend and actually we've now added, we have a a group chat. There's now four of us and uh, we're sharing that. And so that, and, you know, and I have not missed a single day, which I think is a miracle. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, You're on a good streak. Yeah. And not, not that, you know, not that if I did happen to miss, it's not like I'm going to beat myself up, but it's just, I so look forward to it because not only does it help me to focus on what I'm grateful for? But then hearing, you know, what my friends are grateful for, that gives me a boost. And it also lets me know kind of what's going on in their world when, you know, we're too busy to see each other for a while. It's like, okay, I, at least I, you know, I we're we're keeping tabs on each other a little bit. And I and I love that. Um, and so, you know, as we're talking about this, and I'm thinking with the gratitude, like you said, I think that that's so important. And that's a great thing. Um, you know, for families to do right with the kids. And so, you know, you can be creative. So, um, you know, maybe at at breakfast, right, you maybe just go around the table and share one thing that you're grateful for, or, um, you know, put a little little note in your kids lunch, right? What do you appreciate about them? Right? That was something else I just read recently about this couple and they every, every morning, they tell each other something that they appreciate you know, in the other person. And I think, oh, wow, that's a great idea. Love well. that. Yeah. Love that. Right. Because, and I think that would be, I think that would be such a great idea for parents and, and kids because, you know, when, when our schedules are so busy and we're, especially we're, you know, raising young kids and you're, like you said, you're driving them to activities and stuff on the go all the time. It's easy to focus on all of the, oh, you know, I've got to do this and I'm rushing mm-hmm. to do this rush. And, you know, I believe that, you know, having kids that it, they're such a gift. And I like to encourage parents to, to pay attention to their perspective, right? And so I know that sometimes, you know, when my kids were young, especially we, I guess, especially my daughter, because she was in dance, and it was, you know, crazy schedule. Mine too. Uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> you get the dance world. And, you know, sometimes it would be like, oh, no, another, you know, another dance event this weekend. And, you know, but then I stopped and I thought, wait a minute, like this time is going to go by quickly. And it's like, okay, you know what, I get to take my daughter and do this, I get to watch her dance, I get to see these kids perform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and some of the the competitions and stuff, you know, you'd sit and you'd watch dance number after dance number after dance number. But you know, again, it's perspective. And I, I always just thought, like, look at these kids, they're so brave, and they're getting up there and, you know, and and performing and doing such a great job. And, you know, their smiles. So, you know, I think that's another thing, right? So whether, um, you know, it's, what can you, you know, put in place, like, what is really going to work, work for you, you know, around the gratitude. So, you know, and make it, make it easy. It's like these little tiny baby steps, right, then you're gonna, you're gonna do it. And, it just makes such a difference the entire day, right? It builds a foundation. The, mm-hmm. You know, and, and when you were talking about sitting around the table and asking the kids what they're grateful for, the other thing that I was getting is that that's also a time to ask them what they would like support in for that day. Mm-hmm. Where would they like to be supported? And it might not be a parent support. It may be angelic support, which is something that we do teach them too. So like you were saying, the... The little dance performances, we're so proud of them and how, you know, they get up there and they do these amazing things in front of these crowds and, or they might just have to, they know they're going to have to do a presentation at school or so they want. And so at the, 
breakfast table, they could be asking, well, I have to do this today. So I would like support. And it's like, okay, we're going to call in the angels and we're going to ask them to support you as well as them knowing that they always have mom and dad and, and their teachers support as well. But it's because we work with the angels and because we teach the children to work with the angels, it's just that another element and that seed that we're planting that they can call upon that all their life for whatever. So it's just kind of checking in mm -hmm. on also, where would you like support today so that they can talk about it out loud? Because mm -hmm. so often I think our children, they, they keep their little worries to themselves. They either figure that they shouldn't be worried or they're too, uh, they're too afraid or too timid to say. So mm -hmm. them saying it out loud helps them too. That's, that's a big thing. And that's, but you're building that routine for them to ask for assistance right. in whatever yeah. form they need. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And I think, um, you know, as you said, it helps them to be able to, to ask for that support and then knowing that they've, no matter what, they've always got support, right. When they're, when they, you know, are alone, right. Somewhere they've yeah. always got their angels to call on. And, um, not that long ago, this little guy that um, I had talked talk to about, you know, angels and, and crystals. And I remember him, he was going to perform at a, um, a dance recital and uh, was feeling kind of nervous. So he's, you know, said to his mom, ask Nola what angel I should call on. <laughs> All right. Great. But it's like, you know, but then they've, they've got that, that thing. And um, yeah. And I think too, um, yeah, just, again, it's that communication too, right? Building that foundation and and helping the kids to know that, you know, like you said, they can ask for help. And one of the things too, if when, it, when they start doing that young, I think it makes it easier because I know I've worked with lots of sort of tween and, and teens and they often don't want to worry their parents, right? So that, that that's another reason why they might not come and, and share things. But, you know, if that's started, right, as, as you said, like around the table and where do you need support today or what, mm -hmm. right? that's a great way to to keep that going so that they feel comfortable in coming and, and sharing yeah. things with mom and dad, no matter what, what age. Exactly. And, and asking them where they need support, it's, you're letting them know you're supporting them and, and we'll call on the angels to support you, but we're not, um, we're not fixing it for you. It's empowering them to, okay, we will support you and you got this. Um, I think, and I know <laughs> I was so guilty of that before I knew all this stuff. I would, I would just try and fix everything for my children. And, you know, you really disempower them then. So just giving them, because they're giving them the tools right. and the encouragement. And I think, you know, when we talk about seeds for success, I think about even our mistakes. Well, we, 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 we don't, don't use that term. They're not mistakes. They're lessons and they're lessons that are building a foundation to grow from. And everything we try succeed or not is a lesson and it will offer growth as long as we think what have I learned from this? Exactly. You know, there's, there's times where even as an adult, or like the same thing is happening over and over again. And it's like, okay, what do you want me to learn from this? If we're, <laughs> you know, tell me loud and clear, but I, each time I'm learning another lesson or I'm learning it a little bit better next time. And it is building that foundation. It is lifting me up as you know, so it's, it's the way we're thinking about that. It, it's all in the foundation, in the seeds that, um, for the growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, that's part of that ritual, right? So if around the breakfast table or, or supper table, that that's, you know, that kind of thing is happening, or even when you're, you're driving your kids to activities, you know, these conversations can happen, right? So finding ways that, that, that works. And I think, um, and also sometimes I like I, I don't know, call it pre-paving. Some people call it pre-paving or just, you know, setting the intention for the day. Like what, you know, asking your kids, what would you like today to look like? Right. So as you as you mentioned earlier, if they've got a presentation, okay, how do you want that to go? Right. And just and yeah. then they kind of, you know, visualize it or kind of talk it through. And I, you know, I want to remember what I have to say. And I write or 
you know, whatever it is that they're worried about and, and helping them to, to do that and set stage. Cause we know, right. When we, um, are feeling good about ourselves and our, you know, vibration is higher, right. Yeah. Then of course the, you know, the universe can support us with that and bring us things yeah. that will, you know, people yeah. and, and, and things to help, help us. So I think that's I love that. another, you know, a, a, another, another great thing to, to do. Um, another one is, um, also how do you want to feel today? Mm -hmm. Right. And so setting that tone as well, like, how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel courageous, happy, joy, but it's amazing what they'll come up with in how they want to feel that day, you know, depending on what they know their day is going to present for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I think that's beautiful. Actually, yeah, that's one of the things I've created a, like a, a daily planner, right? Printed it out. And that's, that's on every page is, you know, setting my intentions for the day. And the first one starts with how do I want to feel today? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and speaking about, you know, the feelings, right? That's another, another thing that we work on in a, with the kids in our workshops is ways to handle their big emotions, right? So again, right, they can, that's another thing that could be, you know, discussed, you know, maybe bedtime, or again, around the dinner table or whatever, but have those conversations, like, it's okay to feel sad or mad or, you know, angry or afraid, right? And, and then you can kind of talk about some of the ways to to handle those and even practice like you know it would, one of the things that I love doing with the kids in our workshop is getting them to pound their chest and and scream at the top of their lungs right but green <laughs> therapy is amazing even for adults it's amazing you just got to move it out right? right move that energy so you know I mean and that's something that um you know as I'm saying that I'm thinking what a great way if your kids are you know, maybe you're having a, a rough morning or they're kind of grumpy, like to, to sit there and go, okay, let's get the anger out and have everybody, you know, screaming around the table for a couple of minutes and, and get it out. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, sometimes surprising your kids with things. I mean, I, I still remember one morning when my daughter was, uh, you know, a teen and she was kind of moody that morning and, and um, <laughs> probably not the only morning, <laughs> but I thought, you know, I just needed to change the energy. And I took, and I had angry bird gummies and I opened up the package and I started throwing these little birds at her and of course she just like looked at me like I'd lost my mind and yeah. it you know, changed yeah. <laughs> changed the mood right away so you know sometimes we can you know that's that's a good thing to do with our kids right let them well and them. even even my uh, my young adult well they're not not they're not all that young anymore my adult daughters but <laughs> you know when they're having a bad time I'll say to them okay have a bad day, make it epic and move on. Right. Because most of the time you can't fix it. It's just how they're feeling. And so it's like, do what you need to do, but then you're going to move on. And it shifts the way they're thinking about it. And that's, yeah, they might have, they might do a lot of yelling and whatever in the afternoon, like just, yeah, have a bad day, but then move on. And right. that seems to work instead of staying in the, trying to keep it calm and level and staying in that, it'll just simmer and simmer and simmer. So it's like, get it out, scream, use the scream therapy, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I love, I love that you threw ang angry bird gummies at your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she must've went, my mother is losing her mind. I'm sure she did, but it <laughs> but certainly it changed. shifted her energy, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, and my, and my son, I used to take rolled up um socks right ball them up and then I would throw them at them sometimes right? yeah. just <laughs> sometimes you just got to do what you got to do right, right. Yeah. <laughs> help get my frustration out and made him laugh and got him in a better yeah. mood right and again when I say that it's not always about you know expecting our kids to to be happier like you said right it's yeah. but it's finding different ways to deal with them and letting letting our kids know because I think that's you know, I, I've seen it so many times where kids are afraid to show their emotions, or I, you know, overhear parents going, "Oh, you're okay," you know, and don't be sad, or go put a, you know, put a smile on your face, or right. And it's like, no, like I mean, our our emotions are telling us something, right? That something's off. At so least, gotta... at least we're not hearing parents. At least I don't hear it anymore. But when I was growing up, it was. If you don't stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
Yeah. yeah. Thank you know, goodness. I, yeah, I don't hear that much. Right. No, but. but at least, and you know, and that was the thing. I grew up feeling that um, I couldn't express my emotions. And that was the way it was in the 60s and early 70s. Now I'm aging myself. But you know, that's yeah, just I the way know. it was. Yeah. So, and and I'm glad that this new generation of parents, um, us included, how we raised our children and how our children are raising their children is embracing all these emotions. It's so important that we allow them to feel these emotions because mm -hmm. that's all normal. It's what we do with it. And that's, that is the one of the big important things in our workshops with our kids. Mm -hmm. And so we're building that foundation that will carry them through to adulthood is how do I deal with my emotions? Right. What is a safe way for me to express myself and still stay empowered? Yeah. Hear my I, I, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's so important with teaching our kids to, to create their own daily ritual, right? Something that you know, that really works for them, as you said, as they grow into, you know, young adults, they'll mm -hmm. have that and they'll, they'll be able to, you know, handle the challenges because, you know, if we can't, we can't protect our kids as much as we, we want to, you know, it's better, as you said earlier, to, to let them deal with challenges and right, of course, be there to support them, but not jump in to fix things all the time. Because when they become young adults, we're not going to be there to to fix it, yeah. right? So they need to learn how to manage. And I think if they've got these daily rituals that they do, and you know, kind of keeps them on that more of an more of an even keel, then when if something, you know, a challenge comes up, it's like, oh, okay, I, I've got these tools. I know, right? I can call in my angels and I can do that screen therapy and right mm -hmm. and get and get through. Mm -hmm. Um, one other thing too, that I loved that, you know, that we've done is some of the affirmations, right? So that helping them to make that self-talk positive, right? So how yes. you, creating, creating those lists. So again, that's something that could be shared around the dinner table or in the car, right? It's just like, mm -hmm. instead of things like, I can't do that. It's like, you can do that. So, yeah. 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 Okay, I love that. Yeah. And even saying to them when they say they can't do it, it's like, okay, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And have them shift their thinking a little bit. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then where, where do you need the support? Right. Which you talked yeah. about there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're just about time for a break. So, um, before we go, I just want to remind our listeners that uh, if you want a live reading to call in at 1-800-930-2819 or put your name and location in the comment section on any social media platform and our producer will pass that on to us so that we can do a reading for you. And uh, Deb, how do people get a hold of you? We'll talk about this more after. All right. Yeah, um, my company is On A Wing Healing. So Facebook, Instagram, uh, Instagram, it's on underscore uh, underscore wing underscore healing. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, or my website, onawinghealing.com. You can um, send me an email, book an appointment or check out my workshops. And with, um, well, we'll talk about the dates for honoring our sensitive kids after break, maybe. After break, mm -hmm. yeah, we can go on that. Yeah, and if people want to get a hold of me, they can go to my website, nola-peacock.com. And again, you can set up um, a complimentary call or check out our upcoming workshops. So yeah, we'll take a break and we'll see you back here soon. Welcome back to the Angel Empowerment Show on Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, Deb and I are ready to jump in and do some angel card readings. Mm -hmm. So, um, Deb, do you want to do the first one? Do you want to do um, Andre from Saskatchewan? And he sa uh -huh. says he's in self-hate lately, which drives self-destructive behaviors and more self-hate. So he's feeling very discouraged tired of dealing with it and uh, would like to have some guidance and how to move past this. All right. I'm going to use my whispers of ocean. Okay. I've really been loving and this. Lately. Well. Mm -hmm. okay. 
So the card is unexplained wonder. Magical blessings and miracles are occurring in your life. All your prayers are answered now. Um, Andre, in the picture, it's actually um, three fish. But one is, is kind of pointing his nose up to the heavens, up to in the light. And what I'm getting for you is just like we were talking about um, putting yourself into a state of gratitude. Um, one, the angels are stepping forward. They're asking you to ask them for assistance. Uh, understand that the angels have, there's no judgment. It's just really important. They just really want you to realize there is no judgment. There's no agenda. There's no mistakes. They support you 100% no matter where you are or what you're doing. 100%. Unconditional love. So they really want you to ask them to help lift you up. And in that, to start shifting like shifting your thinking. So when you're finding yourself doing negative self-talk, think, say to yourself, would I speak to my child like this? I don't know if you're a parent, but, or a loved one, would I, and literally put up your hand and say, stop. And then ask your angels to come in and assist you in how do I turn this around into a positive thought, positive encouragement. You're your best cheerleader. And, um, and it's just, just stand and feel, I'm just seeing you standing and arms stretched out and just asking them to shine on you and just feel the light and just allow it to absorb into you, um, their blessings, their love, their, I don't know. I just, I feel the light radiating in and it's just consciously allowing it in just a conscious decision to allow the light in and asking them to help you in absorbing it and releasing the darkness and really concentrating on the self, the negative self-talk. Um, I, I know you have blessings in your life. I know that there's, um, and the, your prayers are being answered, but I also know sometimes when we're in that state of despair, it's hard to see it. So they just really want you to allow them in to help lift your vibration to allow the light into your life, allow the light into your being, allow the light into your heart. Nola, do you have? Yeah, well, I pulled a card as well, and it's energy work. Life can be electrifying because its very essence is energy. Your body is a remarkable energy field that will positively respond to loving treatments. Your hands and heart rate are activated to give healing energy to your loved ones and clients. And what I'm getting is... Um, as, as Deb was, was talking about, you know, asking your angels for help. Um, you may want to just, you know, sit and, you know, rant a bit, like let some of this out. What are, you know, you said you're being self-destructive and there's, and that self-hate. So, you know, if you need to let it out and then ask your angels to help you to find, you know, even a glimmer of light, right. Just to feel, feel that. And it may, you know, maybe again, baby steps, right? Just little, little things, but um, yeah, allow your angels to, to help with that energy. And you, you know, you may want to reach out to someone and have a, you know, a healing session or Reiki session or, or something like that, um, just to help to shift your vibration and, and lift you up a bit. Um, and, you know, I, I, so understand that when you're in that dark place, it's hard to see past it. So, you know, again, asking your angels, if you've got, you know, a, a friend that will listen, because, uh, you know, sometimes when we're in a dark place, people want to cheer us up. And sometimes we just need somebody to really listen and acknowledge that things are tough right now. And then we can, you know, get things starting to turn around. So yeah, re reach out. So perfect. <clears throat> All right. So Amy from Kamloops, I'm going to do this. Oh, that one just flipped right over. Uh, Joy, 
Joy is the highest energy of all. It's the magical sense that everything is possible. Joy springs from appreciating the gifts within each moment. Joy allows you to attract and create your present and future moments at their highest possible levels. And the picture is of an angel um, riding on the back of a, a dolphin. And, you know, what I'm getting is just a reminder to be more playful, right? Take that time and just, you know, have fun, act silly, right? Do things that that little girl within you would would love to do and just, yeah, just feel, you know, even more joy than than you normally do. Do you have anything to add to that, Deb? Oh, I think that was perfect. Love yeah. that. I love that. All right. Um, do you want to pull a card for Cindy from Alberta? Oh, okay. I'm going to stick with the oceans deck here. <clears throat> Disengage from outcomes. Oh, this is so in there is a, a group in the card shows a group of, of orcas mm -hmm. and they're I just see them getting ready to pounce and break the surface, but let go so you can open yourself to the highest love that you deserve. Find ways to release worry or any unresolved lack of forgiveness you might be holding on to. And what is really standing out to me is the unresolved lack of forgiveness you might be hanging on to. But what I'm getting is forgiveness towards yourself. So Cindy, I'm getting that um, they're wanting you to look upon, like I get the feeling that you're really knocking yourself in the shoulda, coulda, woulda scenario. <laughs> um, just remembering that there are, a mistake seems to be something you're thinking about. I made a mistake, I should have done this differently is what I'm getting. Um, so what they want you to know is that these were lessons that were gifted to you for reasons. So you got to go through that because it was done for you to build a foundation. And, you know, I always hated the term. I, I remember when I uh, lost my husband and people were saying, well, God doesn't give you God gives you things to help make you stronger. And I remember thinking, well, what do I have to be so strong for? And when you're having lessons like that, it is very difficult to see um, why the whys. But what they're telling me is that it's just accept, allow the growth, allow the experience, because what I learned in my experience of how, how horrific it was, is that I really was able to offer support to other widows as the years went on. And so there was a bright lesson learned in that. So, um, so even the little, the little mistakes, the, they're not mistakes, they're lessons. And it's forgiving yourself. Uh, because there's actually uh, they're even saying there's really nothing to forgive. It's the lessons that you get to learn and that you've been gifted these and to shift the thinking is what they want you to do. And um, just allow yourself to move forward and to grow. Amazing things are waiting for you. What about you, Nola? Do you have that's, be that's beautiful. I just think, um, you know, I know that that was a reading for Cindy, but I think that's something that, you know, <laughs> Can apply to all of us right just yeah, forgive ourselves and yeah, yeah move on all right so we have susan from calgary Let's see what the angels want susan to know tonight all right oh i love this reward yourself You've been given a lot, been giving a lot of yourself lately, and it's time for you to receive. Make the time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. This balance of giving and receiving is essential to keeping your energy, mood, and motivation at a consistently high level. And there's a picture of a young angel, and she's got a beautiful um, seashell, and she's sitting by the right by the water. Um, 
So Susan, I'm getting that, um, you know, this is your angels letting you know that it's time to do something nice for you. So, you know, part of what we were talking about is setting, you know, a daily ritual, but finding those things that, that fill you up, that, that nurture you, um, you know, and maybe you could start by just, you know, making a list of some of the things that, that bring you joy, that help to nurture you. And then, you know, what I really heard is, um, Make the time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. So make it, you know, make it something really special. So, you know, and whether that's buying yourself a, you know, bouquet of flowers or maybe, you know, going to the spa or get away for the weekend, you know, it's again, make it work for you. So there's no, you know, guilt or, or pressure or, you know, right way to do it. It's just what, what will work for you right now that you can, that you can do. But also um, I'm hearing just, you know, to create that daily, daily practice of doing something loving for yourself each day. Anything you want to add? I, I love that. And, you know, it's, there's, there's, it was also reminding me that um, like Susan, I don't know if you're raising a family or, but we all seem to be have supporting people in our life, whether we have young children, grandchildren, siblings, whatever. And it's just remembering that looking, treating yourself and allowing yourself to receive um, special time or um, whatever it is you, you decide to gift yourself is that it, it allows you to be better to be your best you so that you can be there for others sometimes it's really hard to I remember I going to a healing session and and this very wise woman she knew me well and she said Deb when you are still is when your body does its best healing so it's still working because I have a hard time being still <laughs> and it's like okay she knows me well mm -hmm. um and one thing that I did find in my life, if I wasn't allowing that for myself, the divine and the universe would make sure it happened. I remember going, go, 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 go for months and months and months. And then bang, I was hit with vertigo and I spent a weekend in bed. <laughs> so my body got what it needed. But so it's just remembering to honor that and allow yourself those moments and that time and those special rituals and to fill yourself up and doesn't have to be something lavish and expensive, although that's beautiful that if it can be, it can just be the simple things too. And the little things that are important, just making sure you allow yourself to receive that and gift it to yourself. Because sometimes it's not coming from an outside source. Gift it to yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, on tonight's theme, right, I think that that is so important and not only like for ourselves, but when, when we do that, when we take the time and we do those little special things for ourselves, it, you know, if we've got kids, well, that's teaching them to do the same thing, right? They, I mean, they, they uh, do what we do more than we, what we say, right? Yeah. So setting yeah. that example, but also it gives other people in our, in our lives, um, I don't know if it's permission, but it just encourages other people to do the same. I mean, I remember, you know, one of my girlfriends starting to to do some of the things that she really wanted to do. And, you know, and she was worried a bit about what, you know, what her husband would say or whatever. But then it, he started doing, you know, things that he really wanted to do. It's like, oh, yeah, right. This works. So, you know, sometimes we think, oh, I don't have time or I, you know, and it's selfish if I take that time and do it for mm -hmm. me. Um, it really isn't right. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a gift for yourself, but it, it has uh, ripple effects. Right? Yeah. And you're right. We are then teaching our children that it's okay to look after yourself and allow yourself time. Being a martyr is not, is not the way we want to live our lives. So yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. but Deb, do you want to do a reading for Monica in Calgary? Sure. All right. Amble, amble with contentment. Hmm. Waiting rather than acting is going to me be the most advantageous now. So there's little seahorses in there. They're looking very patient. So um, 
what I am getting getting with that is that there is um so the universe has a plan for us the divine has a plan for us but they have their own timeline so whatever it is that you are um I get I, I'm seeing like a stair the staircase so it's like you are doing the steps to to get where you want to be you have a plan and a vision for what your life wants to be what they're reminding you is that it's going to be worth the wait. So it's um, allowing them to, I'm hearing the word catch up. I don't know if that's the right word, but allowing them to catch up because you want to be at the top of that staircase now. You want to be done working and be there now. But it's like our theme tonight, planting the seeds of success. You've planted the seeds. Now you have to allow them to grow, to sprout and to grow. So I'm not getting that year to stop, but it's just catch your breath, allow the universe to catch up. And it's in the works. It's in the works is what the divine wants you to know. The angels want you to know it is in the works and that um, patience is difficult, but well worth it is what I'm getting. No oh, beautiful message. Yeah. Well, I, I'm um, wanted to share a bit about our workshops coming up. I'm very excited about level two. Right. Um, so, Deb, do you want to want to share about a little well, bit about our workshop and stuff? And oh, then I sure. yeah, you've got hey, dates. So, for those of you that haven't heard, it's our honoring our sensitive kids program. Um, it's a unique program where we're working with kids ages six to 12, and that is a general guideline. I have taught five-year-olds. I did teach a four-year-old once. That's pretty young, but every child is unique and different. So we do consider the age. Um, we introduce them to four angels, including their guardian angels. We introduce them to crystals. We give them techniques for their daily rituals we talked about. Um, we connect them uh, or we deal, we talk about their emotions and how to handle the big ones and what techniques that can they use and that they're okay. And the biggest thing we're doing is we're building a safe space for them to share and feel like a lot of the sensitive children um, are very empathic and they're, they're anxious, they have anxieties. And so we teach them about grounding and, but I think every child can use this. Um, sen being a sensitive child is really, I think all our children right now, they're coming to, into this world very empathic. Uh, the unique thing about our program is there is a parent component. Uh, there is a webinar that was done by Cindy Smith, Nola and I, myself, which is sent to the parents prior to the workshop along with a handbook. So it really gives you the parents a foundation and, a to and tools to help support their children. And uh, then after, you know, usually a few weeks after, we'll book a, a Zoom Q&A, a live one for the parents so that now that their children have done the program, you hopefully using some of the materials and, and the parents as well, it's your opportunity to speak with Nola, uh, Cindy and I about any of the concerns or anything that comes up or any questions. So, um, we love it. We are doing it online and in person. Our in-person classes are quite small. Noel and I both do it in our home. Online, then we're, we're, we can expand a bit. So then miles doesn't matter. Um, I'm in Airdrie and Nola's in Okotoks. So we kind of can fit the Calgary area north and south. So good locations. But we do do offer online as well, which is great. I mean, there was a little girl in a little farmhouse in Saskatchewan. She couldn't have done it if we hadn't offered it online. So call, thank you for COVID because we didn't think about doing that until COVID came around. So um, yeah. And Nola, you want to share about our, our level two? We're so excited that we yeah. everybody yeah. wanted more. <laughs> is he working on that level two? Because the kids were like, you know, they wanted to come back, right? They wanted to keep going to, to angel school. So um, yeah, so now we're creating level two. And again, we're going to, you know, help them with with more techniques and, um, you know, meeting more of their angels, and really, you know, help helping to empower them, right? Because that's, 
I mean, that that's ultimately what they need. They need to have the skills to be able to, to manage as they are, you know, growing and becoming young adults so that they can be successful. So yeah, we're busy working on the, the workbook for that. And, you know, and I love that there's that adult component because it's easy, you know, to teach kids things and they start doing it, but then when they've got questions, right. Um, you know, it's nice if parents can, can answer them. Right. And uh, so they, you know, parents have that information. And then, as you said, that, that, you know, time to ask questions afterwards, because it's, you know, as they start using the things and, and trying things out, that's usually when the questions come up. So then we're happy to, to help with that and just keep things, keep things moving in the right direction. So um, our next uh, level one is um, April 15th, and that's an online one. And then June 3rd will be our online for, for level two. Now, if those dates, you know, don't work, please reach out to us anyway, because, you know, especially if you're local and, um, you know, we, we do small groups. So it's, you know, if we've got a, a, you know, two or three kids, even we're happy to, to run it. Um, and again, online, I mean, that's another thing that if those you know dates don't work, we can, we can create another one. Cause we just, we just love doing it with the kids. And I mean, we always learn something too, right. From these yeah. beautiful kids. And I, I love too, that kids, you know, as you said, they're very empathic and, um, you know, and sensitive and, you know, sometimes, you know, they've seen like, they've see their angels or they'll, they'll see things. And, um, you know, I just, that look of delight when they can talk about those things and, we're okay with it, right? It's that safe place for them to, to share. Um, and I've, I mean, I've heard several kids, right, talk about how they, they can't talk about that with, with their friends, right? Or, or at school, or, you know, because they don't get it. So it's a, it really is a safe place. And, you know, that community, right? Because it's like, oh, there's other kids that can do this. So, so, uh, Deb, do you want to just remind people how they can get a hold of you and also to yeah. check out the web, the, um, workshops? Yeah. So my website is onawinghealing.com. And on there, you will see the list of the children's workshops. And I also offer adult workshops. So um, and there again, too, because I keep my workshops small, if uh, there isn't a date that suits you, um, or if there isn't a date that's up to date, and it's a workshop that interests you, reach out to me, I will often just run it because someone wants would like to attend. And it's amazing how that works. People start signing up. So, but I do keep them small. Two to six people is the most I do. So, mm -hmm. oh, all right. And uh, people can go to my website, which is nola-peacock.com and uh, look at the kids workshops and the coaching programs that I have available. And um, just a side note, I also, since my own cancer journey, I also help women going through cancer. So, um, you know, if you know someone who's going through, I've got um, lots of resources to help support them. So you can also reach out and, and book a call with me and we can, you know, brainstorm and come up with some ideas. Um, and next week, Deb, you're back with Cindy. Um, mm -hmm. and it's flip your mistakes to lessons. And we kind of right. touched, touched a little bit on that tonight. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. More, more Very about, passionate about that subject. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, there are there are no mistakes. I loved when you yeah. said that. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, be sure to check that out for next Monday, March 13th. And uh yeah, just any any comment that you want to make before we say no goodbye. I just I just want to say you know I and I know Nola you feel this way too anytime you have a question just reach out we don't mind at all um just send a a, a message through Facebook um Instagram or even on our web on our websites and uh yeah it's um we love hearing from people we comments do. or questions yeah we do and just a reminder to you know start creating your daily ritual if you don't have one already just and again make it yours make it something that'll work one one little piece so and let it be flexible mm -hmm. absolutely well thank you deb and yeah Thanks thank you to our listeners and uh yeah we'll see you next week Thank you for listening to the Angel Empowerment Show from I Can't to I Can with your host, Cindy Smith, and co-host. 
Learn to empower you with angelic guidance every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. It's easy to tap into your divine self and trust in your angelic guidance. Let Cindy and co-hosts give you a loving push to explore your potential. For more information, go to CindySmithAEP.com. That's CindySmithAEP.com.